Hello everybody, today we are going to be changing the rear brakes on a 2017 Honda Civic. Uh, it is a hatchback, but that shouldn't make much of a difference. Um, I already have the tires off, uh, well one of them anyway, so we're going to start on the driver's side and we'll take a look at that. Alright, here is the wheel well. Um, as you can see, and as I said, tires are already off. We can see in here the disc rotor, the brake rotor, brake caliper, and then, oops, don't mind the handwriting, and then the brake pad. So today I'm going to be replacing the pad and the rotor. Um, as you can see, my rotor is a little rusty. Obviously it still works, otherwise I'd have crashed by now. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to start here. So, something to note about this car, uh, I changed the front brakes a while ago and they actually are different front brakes than rear brakes. Now some of you might say, well yeah, of course, you need more braking power in the front. Um, which is true, because when you brake, you lean all of your momentum towards the front tires and uh, you need a little more stopping power up there. However, I was not anticipating having a little plastic bit in the back here that is actually for the brake hold system. Um, on the Honda Civic, you have this little button that you can press and if you're in drive but you've come to a complete stop, um, it will actually hold the brakes for you and then you can take your feet off the pedals. You're still in drive but you're not moving. Um, and then when you decide to press the gas again, it'll automatically release the brakes and you can continue driving, which is pretty useful if you're in, I don't know, drive through lane or stop and go traffic or something. But um, there is a bit of difference in the brake caliper in the rear. So if we zoom in here on the brake caliper, you can see this little plastic bit back here. This little system um, is part of the, the brake hold. And there's a little wire in here somewhere that I don't know I'm getting the right angle on, but that's something you're gonna wanna watch out for. You don't wanna damage that in any way. And uh, you might have to smack on this a little bit to get it off, so just be wary of that. Anyways, enough of the precaution, let's get to changing the brake. Um, you're not going to be able to get the rotor off without taking the caliper off, so let's start there. That one is held in by a couple bolts. We got these, uh, these slider bolts here, one on the top and one down on the bottom. Um, there are these little plastic caps on them. They just are right in the back of this little rubber piece. So. You can prime off the hand or you can use a flathead screwdriver. Uh, we'll show you that bottom one. Just gotta get my tools here. All right, so it's just right here. We'll wedge that in and there, it just fell off. I didn't even catch it. So um, if you reach in the back of there, you're gonna feel a, a hex head bolt. So we got a seven millimeter socket. It's just a, a solid hex key. 7mm. We are using uh, metric because this is a Japanese car. Um, so that's just going to go right in the back. Like that. And we'll crank that off and I'll be right back. Alright, it is possible that they're going to be a little uh, stuck on there. Mine were a bit rusty here. But, um, so you might have to hammer on it a little bit. This one's starting to go. We can continue that and then we'll also get the top one. Let's see if we can fit it in there. Oops. Ooh, that top one's giving me a little bit of trouble. You just want to be real careful about your uh, your brake line here. This is actually what the brake fluid flows in. Is this little metal tube and then it goes around back to the rubber tube. It was just close enough to my ratchet that um, I could fit it in, but it is definitely rubbing on there. Um, I was able to loosen it a little bit, so we'll finish cranking that out. And then we'll be ready to go with taking half the caliper off. Okay. So both of those are loose now. Um, we're going to continue doing these out by hand, and we'll be right back. All right, both of these slider pins are loose. I'm not sure if that's their actual name, but uh, that is their function. Because on a caliper like this, both sides are allowed to move. Um, you do have the caliper, uh, there's a piston on one side of the caliper. 
So when it pushes from one side, that is automatically going to want to pull this side towards it when it hits the rotor. So uh, this piece is allowed to float back and forth a little bit, which I can't really show you. But on these bolts, once you get them out of the threaded piece here, they have a little, uh, little ledge on them, and you can just take a flathead and uh, push them out of the way and you know, wedge it out that way. They'll come out the back, and you can grab them, and there you go. It's uh, basically just a really smooth bolt that it slides back and forth. So we'll save this. We're going to need it when we put it back on. Um, I'll pop the other one out, and we'll continue. All right, there is one last bit that we got to take care of before we're, we can take the caliper off, and it's this spring right here. Um, the easiest way I've found to do this is you just kind of take a flathead and Pop it off. You do want to remember how you put this on, uh, or you know the orientation of it, because we're going to be putting it back on. But you can just kind of put it in there. And eventually, one side comes out, and once the one side's out, it's fairly easy to get the other one. Seems like I'm not having much luck, but uh, we'll work on it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so here's our little spring. Um, it was just sitting up under there, wedged in there. Um, that is for two reasons. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't fit properly right in the hole, so if we were to stretch that up there into the hole, we'd get a downward force this way. Um, that's to take and hold our caliper into the wheel, into the into the rotor. Because this piece here, where the spring was resting, this piece, this ledge, and this ledge is stationary. Um, so we can actually take this and move it a little bit, and that is actually going to come off. So when we want, when we put it back on, we want this spring to be in there. And make sure that it's holding it close to the tire. Uh, I'm sorry, close to the, the rotor. So now we should be able to just wiggle this a bit. And it is holding our pads in there, so sometimes the pads can get a little stuck, but uh, we'll continue wiggling. Let me get this, see if we can get our little screwdriver in there. Get this off. Trying to be careful to not bash that plastic piece back there. But it just seems to not be coming off. I think that's because we got a bit of rust around the edge. It's creating kind of a lip. Oh, there we go. Alright, it is free now. So, we're going to set that out of the way. Hopefully in a way that does not damage anything. We're going to try to get this pad out. There's our old pad. Oopsie daisies. Alright, we will I suppose put it just like that and we'll hope that doesn't uh, do anything. Whew, okay. So let's take a look at the old pad versus the new pad we're gonna be putting on. And you'll uh, you'll quickly be able to tell why I need to put new pads on. Holy cow, that was close. This is my old pad. Uh, still has a little bit of surface left on it, but um, when we see here in just a second, you can see. Okay, so this is actually the, the braking surface, and the part where you see the shiny part stop is the actual backing of the brake pad, the metal part. Um, you don't want that touching your rotors. It'll scratch it up, and you'll need new rotors. But I'm going to replace the rotors anyway, so it doesn't matter. This is the new brake pad. Ah, look at how much difference that is. That's insane. Um, yeah, the guys at the car shop, <laughs> the auto shop, were like, hey, you need new pads. I was like, yeah, I know. So, here we are doing this video. Um, these are both the same. Um, 
doesn't really matter. The outside ones are the same on either side. But when we take the other ones off, the, and we'll see if we can show you here, the inner side, so that was the outer side, that was the side I was touching here. The inner side is here, and we'll see if we can wedge that off. There we go. So this is the outer side. Um, it has a little spring for retaining it, and that presses up against your caliper. But uh, it also has this little squealer. It's a, I don't know, you call it whatever you want, but when this gets too low, when your brake pad material gets too low, this will actually hit your rotor and make that really high-pitched, whiny, squealy sound that you hear when your brakes are bad. Um, and that just lets you know, hey, you have to do this right now because um, otherwise the backing will start touching your rotor, and that's not good. Now this one actually, I'm not sure why the outer one was so much thinner than this one, but this one, as you can tell, is super rusty and needs to be replaced. Um, this one also has a little arrow on it, which means it goes towards the front. Um, your squealer piece, you want to be in the back, uh, which is a key point because we're going to have to do that on the other side and it'll be flipped. But you basically want the rotor to be pushing that squealer, that little piece of metal, into your pad so it makes that vibrating noise. Um, for reference, here's the new one, old versus new. Um, oops, I may have the wrong side. Uh, as you can see, the squealer on this one is on the wrong side, so this is probably for the other side of my car. Uh, but the brake pad material is much thicker, and uh, it's got a nice shiny paint job and all that. So we'll put the new ones in, and uh, we'll get ready to go. All right, I got the proper one now. Squealer's on the right side. Um, I almost forgot we were going to take the rotor off, so let's take a look at that. Put my new brakes aside here, and then we'll take a look. So we got the main caliper off, the piston, but then we still have this housing. Um, that housing is going to be held on by a few 17 millimeter bolts. There's one here. Oops, let's see if we can get that in focus. One here, and then one down on the other side, kind of where I've hung the caliper. So we're going to have to move that. But that will take this chunk off, and that will pull off. And then all that's left is to get this off, which is a little, little screw down there. So let me see if I can rearrange, and we'll get going.